All right, so this should be for April 19th, so Monday, for my Algebra 2K students. We're talking about long division and transformations. Now, again, depending on which class you're in, you may have a different schedule, um, may have a different thing. I know for my first period, I tried to cover a little bit of long division, um, but I think this will make a lot more sense than what we covered on Friday if we did cover it that way. Um, and again, depending on who your teacher is, you may have a slightly different schedule on this. So let's get into it. All right, before we get started, let's do a quick review of long division. Because for some of y'all, you haven't seen this since elementary school. And frankly, that was a while ago. That was before COVID. Okay, hopefully. All right, so uh, let's get into the basics one. So let's, let's look at this one on the left here. We have three going into 894. And what you do is you take this three and say, all right, how many times does this three go into eight? Well, twice. Then what's two times three? Well, that's six. Then you subtract it, you get two. You bring down the nine and you have 29 down here. Well, how many times does three go into 29? Well, nine times, all right? That's 27, subtract that. Okay, you have a remainder of two. So bring down the four. 24, how many times does three go into 24? That's eight times, and that's 24. So we don't have any remainder, so our answer is 298. Well, what if we do have a remainder? Let's take 17 into 445. Well, 17 is also two digits. So we're going to compare 17 not to 4, but to 44. Well, 17 goes into 44, I'm guessing twice. So 2 times 17 gives me 34. Subtract that, and I get 10. Bring down our 5. 17 goes into 105. Let's say 5 times. Let's just see what happens with 5 times. 17 times 5 is 35, and 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 85, and this comes out to 20. Well, 20 is bigger than 17, so that's not the right answer. I should go up to a larger number. So instead of 5, let's put 6. All right, let's do 6 times 17. 6 times 7 gives us 42. So 2 and then 4. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10, so 102. Then when we subtract it, we get a remainder of 3. So our answer becomes 26. And you guys may remember putting like R3. Well, instead of that, let's put it properly. And what this is, is plus a remainder of 3 over 17. Now we can do something very similar with polynomials. So what if we have stuff with variables? Can we divide this? Well, yes. Let's do that down here. So how we do this is very similar. We set up x plus 2 going into 2x plus 1. Well, and we look at the first term. We have x going into 2x. Well, how many times does x go into 2x? Well, twice. So then we multiply 2 times x plus 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we're subtracting this, just like we did on the prior bit. So now when we subtract it, 2x minus 2x is 0. You don't really need to write that. But 1 minus four, a positive 4 is negative 3. So what we end up for our answer is 2 minus 3 over x plus 2. And this should be also the same function as our original. So if we were graphing this, our original function was 2x plus 1 over x plus 2. Get something like this. Our new function is 2 minus 3 over x plus 2. And that gives us the exact same graph, which lets us know that we did the correct thing. And the reason we're doing all this is so that we can turn it into transformation form, because our new answer is a lot closer to transformation form than our original. Let's do a bit more practice on this, though. Okay. So x minus 6 is dividing x plus 1. How many times does x go into x? Well, once. 
So we just have x minus 6, because 1 times x minus 6 is x minus 6. Then when we subtract, x minus x is 0, 1 minus negative 6 is positive 7. If you don't believe me, please use your calculator at this point. So our final answer here is f of x equals 1 plus 7 over x minus 6. We're essentially taking our answer, putting that out front, we're taking our remainder and putting that on top, and then we're taking our what we divided by, and that is the bottom of our fraction. Okay, now we could rewrite this in the opposite way, as opposed to 1 plus this as 7 over x minus 6 plus 1. Essentially, switch the order. And that brings us down into transformation form which tells us that we have an a of 7, so a vertical stretch of 7. We have an h of 6, so we did minus 6 here, so we went right 6. We have a plus 1, so that means we're going up 1. So our asymptotes are x equals 6 and y equals 1. Cool. And that also tells us that our domain is all real numbers, but not 6. Range is all real numbers, but not 1. So something like range, all real numbers, but x does not equal 6 all numbers, but y does not equal 1. Something along those lines. Okay, so let's try doing this all in one go. We're going to divide and describe the transformations. So first, got to divide. x plus 12 going to x minus 7. x goes into x one time. So I have x plus 7, and I am subtracting that. So I have 0 minus... 19. So what I have is if we write the remainder first, so we do f of x equals negative 19 over x plus 12 plus 1, what we have is we have it in transformation form. So all our transformations, negative 19 plus 12 and plus 1, are out here where we can use them. So let me label these to make it a little bit easier to kind of talk about them. So number one, we have a negative sign up front. That's going to reflect over the x-axis. Number two, we have 19 on top. That is stretching it by a factor of 19. So 19 times taller, 19 times further away from the origin. Um, and then we have that plus 12, that's going to shift left 12. The entire graph is shifting left 12. And the plus 1 is going to shift the entire graph up 1. So asymptotes and domain range. First off, asymptotes. Asymptotes would be x equals negative 12, y equals 1. x equals negative 12 is coming from the bottom part of the function, y equals 1 is coming from this plus 1 on the end. Okay. That means that our domain is all real numbers, but not negative 12. And our range is all real numbers, but not y equals 1. Okay. That should pretty well cover that. All right. Let's try this. Please describe the transformation. It's already in... Um, transformation form. So we can just kind of take a look at this and go, hey, transformation, 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 transformation. So let's just go for it. So one, two, three, and four. We'll just kind of talk about each of these in order. All right, there we go. So one, Negative sign. This is going to reflect. Two. The th three. That's going to stretch by a factor of three. Three. The plus one. That's going to shift left one. Four. The plus three. That's going to shift up three. Cool. Next, asymptotes. Okay, we have x equals 
negative 1, and y equals 3. This is coming from our transformations numbered 3 and 4, and they are domain range. Domain is all real numbers, but x doesn't equal negative 1. Range, all real numbers, but y does not equal 3. Cool. That's it. Let's go on to, we have two more examples. Let's get these handled. So this one, first divide x plus 4 going into 2x plus 1. x goes into 2x twice. So we're going to multiply this one. So we have 2x plus 8. And when we subtract, we would have 0 minus 7. So we would have, we could rewrite this as negative 7 over x plus 4 plus 2. All right? Transformations, negative 7 plus 4 plus 2. So what we have here, well, our transformations, 1, we have a negative sign, so we're reflecting. 2, we have a 7 on top. So we're stretching by a factor of 7. 3, we have a plus 4 on bottom. That's going to shift left 4. 4, we have a plus 2 on the end. That's going to shift up 2. All right. Then let's cover domain range. Or, sorry, asymptotes first, then domain range. So asymptotes is going to be x equals negative 4 and y equals 2. So our domain and range. Domain is all real numbers, but not negative 4. x can't equal negative 4. Our range is all real numbers, but y can't equal 2. Cool. Divide and describe the transformations. Sure, we'll take this one. So x plus 2 going into 3x plus 6. x goes into 3x three times, so we have 3x plus 6. Huh. So when we subtract, we have no remainders. So in other words, this becomes f of x equals 3. Well, that's essentially like saying that we have something like this, y equals 3 which is a straight line. But the problem is, is not quite. What's really going on is our original graph was f of x equals essentially 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 2. So while yes, the x plus 2's cancel, if you put negative 2 into this, we still have not quite an asymptote at negative 2, but we have what we call a hole. So essentially, when stuff cancels out, what's left is we still can't put in values that would make the bottom of the function zero. So what we have is we have a horizontal line at y equals 3, but it has with a hole at x equals negative 2. That's essentially what we got. Now, is this still a rational function? Technically, yes. Technically, no. In terms of describing the transformations, I'm not doing the best of job because we turned one type of function into another. Um, we're not going to be seeing a ton of these initially. So I want you guys to kind of go through this. You don't have to expect holes in your work here. In fact, I don't see any when I'm looking at this. But what I want you guys to do is go through this practice problems, um, describe the transformations. Some of these things are already in transformation form, like 1 through 3. Uh, some of them you're going to have to divide, like 4 through 9, um, and describe them. Now, for 10, 11, 12, you are graphing and describing. So some of these, again, you have are already in transformation form. Some of them you have to divide. So go through this. If you have questions, ask your teacher. It may be me. It might not be me. But uh, best of luck, y'all. Hopefully this helps. Have a good one.